so now let us go and check how would we how would we do it using the output that we right so let us go to the output output and look at the estimates look at the estimates and remember what are we going to use we are going to use standardized coefficients so we copy this so we want to copy this they will right click just click on this standardized regression weights and right click and say copy okay and then you can open an excel a blank sheet and just say right click paste values okay are you getting this you can copy it and paste the standardized loadings these estimates are our landmarks okay this is what let us call this as lambda then what do we do we compute lambda square then what do we compute we compute 1 minus lambda square or you can actually call this as lambda to the power to the power 2 and here also you can say this is lambda to the power right so what have i what have we got to do now this is if this is our lambda remember ab let us first compute ab ab is what we will square the loadings so let us square these loadings this multiplied with itself this is the square and take the square of all the loadings okay and maybe give a insert two lines here in between each of the sub values so let us insert two lines between this is emp this is lex this is okay, just for our clarity so we are working on emp now so what was our formula for ev ev was simply what did we do we said we will take the average of the square of the loading so we'll sum it up and take the divided by number of it. so what will be ab ab is going to be nothing but average of the three lambda squares that is it this becomes our ab right and i have marked. this becomes my ab similarly for lex i will merge and let me just take the average of the three values for lex and this becomes my ab for the second construct very simple and then for the last one i again take the average of the square of the loadings of the four lambda squares and this becomes my ab for the for the third construct so this becomes our ab then what do we do we do cr for cr yes so richa if you go by the formula here if you if you just write the formula average so it will automatically divide the by number of items so it is taking average of these four so here it will be divided by 3 for lex by 3 it will be one what will be one minus lambda square very simple just say one minus what we have computed g7 lambda square so this becomes our one minus lambda square 
Similarly, do this for all of these. Okay. Just delete these two lines in between. So this becomes a one minus lambda. Now for composite reliability, remember what did we need? We needed sum, sum of lambdas. So what will we do? We will take sum of the three lambdas. Remember the formula, what did we do? We said when we are working with composite reliability, we will first take the sum of lambdas and then square it up, divided by the sum square plus the summation of the errors, one minus lambda squares, right? This is, this is what we had done. This is what we had written. Summation lambda whole square, summation lambda whole square plus one summation of one minus lambda squares. So I am writing here sum, okay? This is, let me highlight it in bold. So I have taken the sum of the lambda. I have taken the sum of the lambda, one minus lambda squares. This becomes summation one minus lambda square. And then I have to do sum square. So let me put it this way. This is my sum square. Okay. What will it be? It will be square of this square of the sum. So this becomes my sum of square of sum of lambda. Now what is CR? CR is if you go to the formula, lambda summation, lambda whole square. So this is sum square divided by sum square plus summation of error variances, right? This becomes our composite. This let me actually say this. This is error variance error bar, which is equal to this. okay. So this becomes my composite reliability for the first. Similarly, I will do sum which is equal to sum of the three lambdas. I will take the sum of error variances and I will take the sum square, which is nothing but this multiplied by this. This becomes my next set of working. And what will be my composite reliability? Composite reliability is sum square divided by sum square plus the error summation of and this becomes my composite reliability for the second. Then I again do the same thing. I take do the same thing for first orientation. I take the sum I do the sum square and I take the sum of of sum of error. Right? This becomes fine. Right? So what have we done? We have right? this is what we are having. Now, and now I am going to take the ratio of sum square divided by sum square plus the right. So actually, this becomes a
right? So this is our CR. Now what are we seeing? I will I will upload this Excel also in the shared drive for today in the folder for today. So what are we seeing for all the three constructs? We are seeing that our CR is greater than 0.7, and our AV is also greater than 0.5. So we get that these items are good measures of their latent factor. Right now, the last thing before we stop for today is our discriminant validity test, which is factor one to three and factor one to three. Now, what is the AV of factor one, which is EMP? EMP, the AV is this for factor two, the AV is 0.54 and Remember the diagonal, we said we will put the AVE values, right? So let me, this, this is centered and I will just format this to two decimal pieces so that it becomes easy for all of us to understand, right? So this is our AVE. So the diagonal elements, diagonal elements are our Diagonal elements are AVE of the constructs of the constructs. Then what is the correlation? What is the correlation? This is F1. Let me also give the name. F1 is A and B. F2 is LEX. Right. This is these are our three dimensions. Now, what is the correlation between F1 and F2, EMP and LEX? Where do we find it? We find it in the AMOS output. What is the correlation between EMP? and LEX, it is 0.611. This is under the output estimates correlation, EMP and LEX. So EMP and LEX is 0.61. EMP and TO, EMP and task orientation, it is 0.665. So we can write it as 0.66. And what is the correlation between EM F2, that is LEX and TO? LEX and TO is 0.785, which is 0.7. So below the diagonal, remember what we draw, drew. Below the diagonal is correlation. Okay. And above the diagonal will be the square of these correlations. So what is the square of this correlation? Let us compute it. What is the square of this correlation? Let us compute this. F1 F3. And the square of this correlation is this. And this. Right, so above the diagonal, above the diagonal, Right. Square, square of the relations and below the diagonal are relations. So now if you, you can simply check the discriminant validity, you can see that AV for F1 is greater than 0.37 and 0.44. So this test passes. For second test, if you see 0.55 is greater than square of 
F1, F2 correlation, but it is less than the square of correlation between F2 and F3, that is 0 0.6. So 0 0.55 is less than 0 0.61. And for point F3, the, its AV is greater than the square of its correlation with the other. So what do we see now? We are seeing that first condition F1 passes, second does not for factor two does not pass for the third one it also passes, right? So therefore, what are we saying? That there seems to be high overlap between factor two and factor other factors. That means these factors that we have got now, they, though the items are loading onto them pretty well, but they are not very distinct. So what can we do? We can either merge all these factors together or model a second order factor, which is a higher order factor for this. So we will do that tomorrow. Right, we will do that. So remember our, uh, so Lekha correlation is, what is the communality you have with the, how much correlation you have. So the square of the correlations are an indicator of how much do you share with the other uh, factor. Right? So that is why they are actually an indicator of shared variance that uh, the one factor has with the other. R square always is a representative of the shared variance that you have with the other uh, uh, factor. So in this case, it is, it is an indicator that my factors are not very distinct from each other. So uh, even for loadings, remember this is standardized loading. Square of the standardized loading is covariance. Okay, so, so remember square of the co standardized loadings are, uh, so similarly here also square of the standardized correlation, that means standardized uh, covariances are an indicator of the variances that are, that it shares with the other. Right, so what I want you to do today 